is brachial plexus surgery in three minutes especially for developing nations with strategies that will work to be able to understand exactly the principles behind the brachial plexus reconstruction it is important to first understand how axons react to injury here we can see that the axons have once they have injured they undergo a process known as Wallerian degeneration that progresses distally. What happens after that is axonal regeneration that occurs proximally that goes down at one millimeter per day. It is important to note in the, in the muscles, if left untreated, there's no signals that come down the nerve. It results in the death of the end plate and this would occur in the brachial plexus approximately within 18 months of the injury. Therefore, it is important to, have, to provide a re innovation prior to that. So, in the priorities for brachial plexus surgery, is therefore to provide elbow flexion and shoulder abduction so that they can use the limb to assist in life as compared to a useless limb. Therefore, the reconstructive strategy that we recommend in pan plexus injury, therefore, which is injury in which all the nerve roots have been abulsed, it is a completely useless hand, is to provide shoulder abduction with the use of the suprascapular nerve being innervated by the spinal accessory nerve. So the spinal accessory nerve is the nerve from the cranial nerves and therefore this will be used to provide shoulder abduction with suprascapular function. For elbow function, we recommend the use of phrenic nerve with then pseudo nerve graft to lengthen it to provide innervation to the branch to the biceps. This is shown here, the phrenic nerve and a pseudo nerve graft is tunneled underneath and then it is sutured to the nerve branch to the biceps. We also recommend if it is possible to use a long phrenic nerve by doing a thoracotomy and taking the phrenic nerve from the diaphragm and then bringing it out to the neck and stitching it without the use of a nerve graft. Alternatively, it can be done through a thoracotomy. For the purposes of sensation to the hand, this would be a useful option is to use the contralateral C7 with a vascularized ulnar nerve graft and using that to suture to the median nerve to provide sensation and hopefully also anterior interosseous nerve function. For partial plexus injuries, especially upper plexus where only C5 and C6 are affected, this results in a failure of abduction of the shoulder and paralysis of the elbow flexion. To provide uh, shoulder abduction, we will use the same strategy using spinal accessory nerve or suprascapilla. If the triceps are very strong, we could use the somsap transfer, which is the use of the long head of the triceps branch of the radial nerve, which is transferred to the anterior portion of the axillary nerve like deltoid. For elbow flexion, we can use the branch of the FCU in the ulnar nerve to transfer to the nerve to the biceps, and if you want more power, can also take the branch of the FCR in the median nerve to the brachialis. So here are some questions for you to reflect on and I hope this little talk has been useful. Thank you.